Where are you using the most energy in your day? Are you exerting physical, mental, spiritual, social, creative energy? Whatever it may be, take that answer. And now I want you to ask yourself, how can you restore yourself from the energy that you've exerted? Because rest should equal restoration. Chronic exhaustion will happen if restoration does not occur. Hey everyone, welcome back to the last episode of Unbothered Mastering Self-Improvement. I told you this was going to be six weeks of a pop-up podcast and I did it. I'm so proud of myself. I just wanted to pop up for six weeks, test out the waters, wake up my social media platforms because I definitely did a video on YouTube where I looked into the camera and I said, you know what, I'm going to take a little bit of a break. And then that break ended up being like five years. So it's definitely not going to be five years. I probably won't even be but a week or two, but I just wanted to do a little bit of a pop-up podcast, connect with you all, mission accomplished. I wanted to wake up my social media feeds, mission accomplished, and I wanted to build community amongst you and I, mission accomplished. For the last episode, you know I had to go out big, you know I had to go out strong, you know I had to pop the bubbly as we talk about rest. And you wouldn't think that rest and bubbles go together, but they actually do. Because I want you to know that rest and sleep are not the same. You can rest and still feel like you need sleep. You can sleep and feel like you still need rest, but rest is the most vital thing that you could do. And if you take away anything throughout these six weeks, I want you to remember the emotionally centered and self-aware person inside of you needs rest in order to thrive. But as we talk about what resting is and how we can really use it as a tool to implement into our daily lives, not just when we feel like we're gonna break down, I'm going to share how I'm going to rest over the next week or two before I pop back into connecting with you all on video and podcast again. And I'm also going to peel back the layers of some of the things that I've learned that has saved me tremendously from having serious emotional, physical, and spiritual breakdowns. So yes, this is the last episode but it will certainly not be the last time you see me. So for today's conversation, I wanted to pair this topic with McBride Sisters Collection Wine. The McBride Sisters are the most dynamic duo in the wine business. This McBride Sisters Collection Wine is a sparkling brute rosé, beautiful bubbles, beautiful color from Hawke's Bay in New Zealand. The stories of these sisters still amazes me. And when I did private wine tastings, this was my go-to collection to share. So just to tell you a little background about these sisters, they were unaware that the other existed. They were raised in wine regions of California and New Zealand, independently developing appreciation for the craft of winemaking. Despite the 7,000 miles between them, they eventually found each other. And just like how there were 7,000 miles between them and they found each other, I think it's the same for us. Some of you all on different countries, different continents, or even just across the pond. However, one thing that we have in common is our love for evolving, our love for becoming better, mastering self-improvement is what we do. And because of that, we've grown closer to each other and we're on this path together. All right, we have our sparkling wine. Cheers to us completing this six week pop up podcast. Cheers to the new and old friends and family who have held me down, who have listened and both watched on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you even just listen. Thank you for everyone who sent me a DM, a message, a text. Thank you for helping me build this community of people who are continuously mastering self-improvement and remaining or becoming unbothered. Cheers to us. Let's take our first sip of this bubbly. I know I say this all the time, but this particular wine by the McBride Sisters is one of the best summer sippers you can ever have. A cold, bubbly, dry, sparkling rosé with notes of strawberries and cream, a little bit of melon, a little bit of floral notes. The texture of it is incredible. The finish of it is amazing. It's a perfect wine. I can down this easily, but I'm not going to. But after I finish this conversation, I'm definitely gonna get on this couch behind me. And just like my topic says rest, I'm gonna rest all right with this bottle in my hand. Cheers guys, let's start this conversation. Mm. So the last podcast episode is entitled Reclaiming Rest, Your Essential Pause Button. And I know you're wondering, why did you choose rest? A lot of you are wanting to make a therapy appointment, quit your job, move to a new place, be in a new environment, have a new set of friends. But instead of doing those things, what you actually may need is rest. True, complete rest. And like I said earlier, don't get it twisted. Rest and sleep are two different things. There are so many different energies that are constantly being pulled from us or that we're voluntarily giving. And just like there are different types of energy that we give out to the world, 
There are also types of rest that we need in order to fulfill and restore us from the energy that we've just put out. Let's break down what rest is. According to the dictionary, rest is when you cease work or movement in order to relax, refresh oneself, or recover strength. <laughs> but you all know I had to do my own definition. And my definition of rest is the tender pause where we find renewal woven into the rhythm of life, nourishing our spirits and invigorating our journey. So with rest, like I said earlier, it's woven into the rhythm of life. You don't just stop when you feel as if you're gonna break down and decide you're gonna rest. You have to make sure that it's woven into your every day, your every week, your lifestyle, your mentality, and how you operate. And not only should it be woven into your life, the people around you should know your boundaries, when you need to rest, and how you need to rest. Because if you don't, you can't be mad when they take advantage of you and take advantage of the energy that they require from you. I have a question for you. Where are you using the most energy in your day? Are you exerting physical, mental, spiritual, social, creative energy? Whatever it may be, take that answer. And now I want you to ask yourself, how can you restore yourself from the energy that you've exerted? Because rest should equal restoration. Chronic exhaustion will happen if restoration does not occur. You know this is a self-awareness podcast. So once you know the energy that you give most of, you have to find out the best resting technique in order to fulfill and restore yourself from what you've given and from what the world requires of you. If I had to ask myself that same question, my immediate response would be emotional. I give up so much emotional energy to the people that I come in contact with. And not just to the people that I come in contact with, but even when I'm alone. I find myself being a person of great emotional depth, but in being a person of great emotional depth, I have to make sure that I'm filling my cup even more than I am exerting and giving from it. Because in giving out a lot of emotional tips and awareness and support, we can sometimes be depleted. I'll sit alone sometimes and reflect and take note of the fact that I give so much emotional wisdom, intelligence, advice, and support to the people around me. And I don't regret it by any means. I know uh, when I was younger, a lot of people used to say, Lauren, you're giving too much, you're giving too much. One of my best friends actually tells me to break up with everyone that I'm ever with because she's like, you're too giving, you're too supportive. But I will say heavy is the crown. I would rather be the one who gives than the one who always needs. And because I have that asset of being able to give of my emotional depth to the world, I have to make sure that I'm taking care of myself and resting and restoring myself so that I can pour out. So if you find yourself exerting a lot of spiritual, mental, emotional, creative energy to the world, it's not a bad thing. And don't get too mad at the fact that you're gifted and you're able to give and give and give. It's a privilege. And because it's a privilege and because you're self-aware of the fact that you are giving and that you are loving, you also need to take note of what it takes to restore, to renew, to refresh. The truth is life is a balancing act and humanity depends on you to be restored. In order for the best version of yourself to show up, you have to be well rested. And a lot of you are walking around being irritable, confused, feeling as if you have a loss of drive. It's funny because there's a solution to a lot of problems that you're having and they're in your control. When I get to a point of being irritated very easily, or when I get to a point where I feel as if I have a loss of drive or loss of motivation, the solution for it is simply just learning how to balance what's happening in my life. Pouring out and pouring in, pouring out and pouring in. Let's talk about the balance and why the world and why humanity depends on you to figure out that balance in order for you to not only walk into your divine purpose, but for you not to be so irritable. Trust me, I've been there. How can we incorporate rest into our life amid busy schedules or demanding careers? We have to strike a balance between this ambition and self-care. And I know self-care is a word you hear all the time and you're over it. You're like, oh my gosh, self-care. Okay, what next? Deep breathe, or maybe I just need a vacation. Yes, those are great solutions. But self-care involves you being first aware of how you get depleted, why you get depleted, and how you can restore yourself so that you don't have to wait until you're on E, on empty, in order to fill your cup back up. Because you need energy and clarity to excel in your endeavors and in your daily life. Your personal well-being impacts the collective society 
I have an example of someone who has mastered the balancing act. She embraces the pause, being sure to take care of herself while still pursuing her endeavors and career. Her name was Glow, and she's actually one of my coaches. What she has taught me is that retirement is interwoven into life. It's not a destination, but a part of the journey. When you're able to incorporate rest, recuperation, and rejuvenation into life on a daily basis, a monthly basis, and consistently, you don't have to just look forward to an end or destination or when retirement comes decades or even scores from now. That can happen today, it can happen tomorrow, it can happen next month. With planning, awareness, and being able to embrace pressing pause. If I told you that you could spend four months of your life traveling, embracing new cultures, spending time with loved ones, learning a new language, or even just learning a new skill, would you even be able to fathom stopping what you're doing now in order to embrace the pause? If the answer is no, this is one of the issues as to why you may feel burnt out and why you are waiting for rest when rest can be within your reach. It takes planning, like I said, it takes awareness, but it also takes you not waiting until you're completely depleted to be still. Because the truth is to any creative who is listening, any entrepreneur, anyone who wants to master self-improvement and self-mastery, is that peak performance is often a result of a well-rested and rejuvenated mind. There's a major connection between rest, innovation, and creativity. It's interesting because when people come across me, they're always like, Lauren, you're constantly on vacation. And it's not that I'm constantly on vacation, but I feel like if anyone has mastered the pause, it's me. I don't care if I have the busiest week or month or year of my life, I will schedule rest. I will be sure to tell everyone who tries to get in contact with me that this is not the moment, this is not the time, this is me time. And I know that that is an issue and difficult for a lot of people. And yes, it is easier for me because I'm not a mother, nor am I married, nor do I have a long list of responsibilities that you may have if you're listening or watching. But what you do have power over is how you implement resting into your day-to-day life. Your mental clarity and emotional resilience will inevitably increase and remain sharp and clear. You'll be able to make better decisions. You'll be a better mother, father, sister, brother, friend, companion. You'll be able to navigate challenges effectively when you're rejuvenated. Research will even show you that adequate rest will ensure emotional resilience. You'll be able to regulate some of those mood swings that you experience. Maybe you'll even be able to reduce some of the stress that you feel in your life. When difficult situations come your way, you'll be able to keep your composure. Your perspective will always be in check. That rest you crave will fuel your innovation, your creativity, and your emotional resilience. During these restful periods, you'll find yourself being able to have fresh perspective, which can oftentimes lead to a breakthrough in your personal and even your professional development. My most innovative ideas and solutions to problems come to me when I'm still and when I'm in a period of restoration. Have you noticed it's when you're in that moment of being restored and renewed that you feel most motivated and inspired? It will contribute to both your physical and your mental health. It will allow your body to repair and to regenerate. Even your immune system will be strengthened and your overall well-being will grow and be empowered. For all of you who are constantly on the lookout for ways that you can improve your mental health, this is crucial for you to help reduce the risk of anxiety or depression, burnout, and even for you to foster a sense of balance and inner peace, which is essential for self-development. Imagine life as a nonstop race filled with constant demands and expectations. While it is a nonstop race, in this relentless pursuit of success or whatever you're chasing in life, you can often overlook the pause button, which is rest. Rest is not a disruption to your journey. It's the crucial pause that allows you to recalibrate, to recharge and come back even stronger. When you're well rested, your mind becomes a fertile ground for creativity. It's during these peaceful moments that your brain connects the dots, unravels solutions to complex problems and fosters innovation. And even beyond individual growth, let's consider the broader impact Humanity relies on individuals who are well-rested, energized, and inspired. Your well-being is not just about you. It's about your contribution to the world. When you prioritize rest, you become more compassionate, patient, empathetic. Those qualities will enable you to positively influence those around you. 
In essence, you become a beacon of light, inspiration, spreading the importance of rest and balance. How you show up in the world is contagious. If you're irritable, the people around you may be irritated. If you're frustrated, the people around you in return will be frustrated. So how can you reclaim rest in your busy life? Start small. Even if you have to plan it, you have to do it. Reclaiming rest is not an act of selfishness. It's an act of self-love and a commitment to being the best version of yourself. We have to show the world the importance of the balancing act of well-being and self-care. Recharging can do wonders for you and the people around you. Even when it comes to this podcast, the reason why I made it six weeks, because a lot of you asked and told me, Lauren, this is too short. I need you to make it longer. I did it because I knew the things that I had coming up. I knew the responsibilities I had. I knew that there were many things coming up. And I don't like to get to that feeling of feeling like I'm pushed up against the wall and I have to do something regardless of the emotional state I am. Yes, I may have to do things when I'm tired, when I feel overwhelmed, when I even feel like I may break down. But in knowing that I get to that state, I can control and schedule things in order to protect my mind state and my well-being because I know that the best version of myself will not show up if I'm not well rested. Yes, I have control over how I show up and I won't be completely rude to you or completely irritated. But at the same time, I know that the patient, loving, loyal person in me will not shine to the ultimate 100th degree (laughs) if I do not feel restored. And in you not feeling restored, there could be a person who interacts with you who may just need what you have to offer, whether it be your creative abilities, your mental fortitude, your emotional strength, your physical strength even, and you won't be able to show up for them and you won't be able to be the best version of yourself, all because you were not able to manage your time, your emotions, and your well-being. You have control over these things. If you know for a fact that you need your mornings, you need your evenings, you need your night, or maybe you even need a window of time at your job. You have to make sure that the people around you know, and you have to schedule it. Because if you don't do it, you will find yourself in this constant cycle and loop of complaining, being irritated, and wishing, hoping, and praying that one day you'll make it out of the state of mind that you're in. That one day can be today. That one day can be tomorrow. That one day can be scheduled for a week from now. If you're listening to this and you know that you give so much of yourself to people, to places, to your job, to anything around you and you feel depleted, it is your duty to communicate it. It is your duty to come up with a solution so that this does not become your norm. Because the truth is it's not normal to be in a constant state of anxiety and to be in a constant state of being tired or being in a constant state of feeling as if you're going to pop off anyone who contacts you or who hits you up for anything. We are givers. We are givers of our talents. We are givers of our time. We are givers of solutions. And you won't be able to give and you won't be able to walk in your purpose if you are not rested. Because even if you do it, you will resent the people that you assist. You will resent the people who take up your time, and sometimes you'll end up even resenting yourself, all because you do not take the time to restore yourself. So yes, we're on this journey of self-discovery. We're on this journey of self-mastery and improving ourselves and evolving. But in order to do this, you have to press the essential pause button. Reflect and think about it and reclaim your rest again. And me doing this podcast and me creating more into the world, me doing one-on-one life coaching, group coaching, creating a platform that I'm going to launch in the fall, early winter. I know that I have to schedule out moments for me to reflect, to restore, because if I don't reflect and restore, I will not be able to innovate and create. I may be able to create, but it will not be excellent. So although this podcast was six weeks It was some of the best six weeks of my life and the six weeks that I will never forget. But in this six weeks, I knew that I had scheduled time to connect with myself again. I had scheduled time to look back at these videos, listen back to this audio and think to myself, how can I improve? How can I ask for help even? How can I better communicate how to master self-improvement? In order to do so, I have to step back. 
When was the last time you stepped back? When was the last time you observed how you felt, what you needed, what you require? And when was the last time you communicated it to the people around you and to yourself? When was the last time you scheduled rest? For me, it's tomorrow. However, as we're on this journey of embracing the best version of ourselves, and as we're on this journey of remaining in a state of unbothered and not letting people control our emotions and how we respond, we have to make sure that we are renewing our minds, that we are restoring our minds, that we are being the best version of ourselves. And in order to be the best version of ourselves, I'm trying to tell you, it's not possible to do so without filling your cup. So fill your cup with sparkling rosé. <laughs> and not just sparkling rosé, but fill your cup with what you need. Like I said earlier, if you're constantly giving creatively, mentally, spiritually, physically, Whatever energy that you exert, make sure that you fill your cup back up with exactly what you need. Because if you don't, there's no way you will master this journey of self-improvement. There's no way that you'll be able to master your emotional responses. And there's no way that you'll be a well-balanced human being. Because we're not just meant to give at the end of the day. We're meant to experience and to receive as well. And for the people like me who love to give, we have to schedule receiving. So if you're listening to this, do me a favor. I want you to take note of a place in your life where you feel like you need to be rejuvenated. And I want you to schedule it right now. Even if it's a 10 minute walk or if it's a one day road trip, I love driving up to the mountains some days by myself and I come right back that evening, but I'll just drive up and enjoy the scenery, have a nice meal, treat myself and come back. And the reason why I need something like that is because I'm not giving to anyone but myself. It's okay to take from the world. You don't just have to give all your gifts and all of your talents. You can take what you need. You can take what you desire. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. This is our last week having this conversation on this podcast, but I'll be back. I promise you I'll be back. It is not going to be like last time when I was on YouTube and I said I'll be back and it took me four or five years to come back. (laughs) I will truly rest. I will restore. And for all of you who are listening, I have a surgery, I think three and a half weeks from now, that is going to take me out for a little bit, but I will continue to create and connect with you all on my social media platforms. It's become a habit of mine. Anything that I would have written about in my journal or that I would have spoken about in my video diaries, here I am just kind of laying it all out for all of us here and I enjoy it. And I really do love connecting with you all. So for every person who's commented, for every person who's texted me or DM me or subscribed to me, I really am so appreciative and I'm excited to show you all my growth in real time. You're going to see me evolving and growing constantly. Every month, every year, I'm going to get better in what I say, what I create, how I present. And I hope you all who are listening will get better along with me in regards to mastering self-improvement, to remaining or becoming unbothered and also just showing up as our best selves. Thank you to all of you. I love you. Make sure you follow me on social media platforms. I'm not disappearing. I'm just saying goodbye for a little bit of time. Make sure you revisit previous podcast episodes. When you miss me, comment, DM me, let me know that you made it to the end of this podcast. I have something releasing soon. And for all of my podcast listeners, you all are my day ones. And I can't wait to share with you all what I'm working on. Stay in the loop. Stay unbothered. I love you. Let's continue to master self-improvement and growing alongside each other. Cheers. I love you all. And I'll see you soon.